hard to fall for me. You stood beneath a burning tree and hoped to rescue me. These restless little thieves. Oh. 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 I shivered through the words I said. They're warmer than the ones that never left my head. I made an ocean of this bed.
to enforce these rights so forcibly withheld. Here have we war for war, and blood for blood. Controlment for controlment, so answer France. Then take my king's defiance from my mouth, the farthest limit of my embassy. Bear mind to him, and so depart in peace. An honorable conduct, let him have Pembroke, look to it. Farewell, Chateau. What now, my son? Have I not ever said how that ambitious Constance would not cease till she had kindled France and all the world upon the right and party of her son? Our strong possession and our right for us. Your strong possession much more than your right, or else it must go wrong with you and me. So much my conscience whispers in your ear, which none but heaven and you and I shall hear. My liege. Here's the strangest controversy, controversy come from country to be judged by you, that e'er I heard. Shall I produce the men? Let them approach. Our abbeys and our priories shall pay this expedition's charge. What men are you? <laughs> Your faithful subject, I, a gentleman born in Northamptonshire and eldest son, as I suppose, to Robert Falconbridge, a soldier by the honor-giving hand of Kurt the Lion, knighted in the field. What art thou? The son and heir to that same fountain bridge. Is that the elder, and art thou the heir? You came not of one mother then, it seems. I'm most certain of one mother, mighty king. That is well known, and as I think, one father. But for the certain knowledge of that truth, I put you or to heaven and to my mother, of that I doubt as all men's children may. <sighs> Out on thee, rude man, thou dost shame thy mother. Why, what a madcap hath heaven lent us here. <laughs> he hath a trick of Curdelion's face. Do you not read some token of my son in the large composition of this man? Mine eye hath well examined his parts and finds them perfect, Richard. Sirrah, speak. What doth move you to claim your brother's land? My gracious liege, when that my father lived, your brother did employ my father much. Well, sir, by this you cannot get my land. Your tale must be how he employed my mother. <laughs> and once dispatched him in an embassy to Germany, there with the emperor. The advantage of his absence took the king. In the meantime, to Jerry and his fathers. For how he did prevail, I shame to speak. But truth is truth. Large lengths of seas and shores between my father and my mother lay, when this same lusty gentleman was got. And upon his deathbed, he by will bequeathed lands to me, and took it upon his death that this my mother's son was none of his. And if he were, he came into the world for 14 weeks before the course of time. <laughs> then, could my liege, we have what is mine, my father's land, as was my father's will. Sirrah, your brother is legitimate. Your father's wife did after wedlock bear him, and if she did play false, the fault was hers. Shall then my father's will be of no force to dispossess this child, which is not his? Of no more force to dispossess me, sir, than was his will to get me, as I think. Whether hadst thou rather be a falcon bridge, and like thy brother to enjoy thy land, or the reputed son of Cur de Lion, lord of thy presence, and no land beside? Would I might never stir from off this place. I would give it every foot to have this face. I would not be Sir Nob in any case. <laughs> I like thee well. Wilt thou forsake thy fortune, bequeath thy land to him, and follow me? I am a soldier and now bound to France. Uh, brother, take you my land. I'll take my chance, madam. I'll follow you unto the death. What is thy name? Philip, my liege, so is my name begun. Philip, good old Sir Robert's wife's eldest son. From henceforth bear his name, whose form thou bearest. Kneel thou down, Philip, but rise more great. Arise, Sir Richard, and Plantagenet. <laughs> Brother, by the mother's side, give me your hand. My father gave me honor, yours gave land. Now, blessed by the hour, night or day, when I was gone, Sir Robert was away. <laughs> the very spirit of Plantagenet, I am thy grand and Richard, call me so. Go, Falconbridge, now hast thou thy desire. A landless knight makes thee a landed squire. Come, madam, and come, Richard. We must speed for France, for France, for it is more than thee. Brother, adieu. Good fortune come to thee, for thou wast got to the way of honesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, now can I make any Joan a lady? And if his name be George, I'll call him Peter. For new made honor doth forget men's names. But this is worshipful society, and fits the mounting spirit like myself, for he is but a bastard to the time that doth not smack of observation. 
and so am I, whether I smack or no. But who comes in such haste in riding robes? Oh, me, it is my mother. <laughs> How now, good lady? What brings you here to court so hastily? Where is that slave, thy brother? Where is he that holds in chase my honor up and down? My brother Robert? Oh, Sir Robert's son. Sir Robert's son. I, thou unreverend boy, he is Sir Robert's son, and so art thou. Madam, I was not old Sir Robert's son. We know his handiwork. Therefore, good mother, to whom am I beholding of these limbs? Sir Robert never hoped to make this leg. <laughs> Hast thou not denied thyself a falcon bridge? As faithfully as I deny the devil. King Richard Curdelion was thy father. As by long and vehement suit was I seduced to make room for him in my husband's bed. Heaven lay not my transgression to my charge. Thou art the issue of my dear offense, which was so strongly urged past my defense. Madam, I would not wish a better father. Who lives and dares but say thou didst not well when I was got? I'll send his soul to hell. No, my maid, what on you say? Four and years, well met, brave Austria. Arthur, that great forerunner of thy blood, Richard, that robbed the lion of his heart and fought the holy wars in Palestine. By this brave duke came early to his grave. <laughs> and for amends to his posterity, out of importance hither as he come, to spread his colors boy in thy behalf, and to rebuke the usurpation of thy unnatural uncle, English John. Embrace him, love him, give him welcome hither. God shall forgive you Corleone's death, the rather that you give his offspring life. Welcome before the gates of Angers, Duke. A noble boy, who would not do thee right? To my home I will no more return, till Angers and the right thou hast in France, together with that pale, that white-faced shore, even till that England salute thee for her king. Till then, fair boy, will I not think of home, but follow arms. Oh, take his mother's thanks. A widow's thanks. Till so your strong hand shall help to give him strength to make a more requital to your love. Well then, to work! Our cannon shall be bent against the brows of this resisting town. We'll lay before this town our royal bones, wade to the marketplace in French men's blood. But we will make it subject to this boy. Stay for an answer to your embassy, lest unadvised you stain your swords with blood. My lord Chatillion may from England bring that right in peace, which here we urge in war. Ah, a wonder, lady. Lo, upon thy wish, our messenger Chatillion is arrived. What England says, say briefly, gentle lord. Then tear your forces from this paltry siege and stir them up against a mightier task. England, impatient of your just demands, hath put herself in arms. His force is strong, his soldiers confident. Along with him has come the mother queen, with her her niece, Lady Blanche of Spain, with them a bastard of the king's deceased. If not, leave France, and peace ascend to heaven, whilst we, God's wrathful agents, do correct their proud contempt that beats his peace to heaven. Peace be to England, if that war return from France to England, there to live in peace. England we love, for that's England's sacred burden of our armor, here we sweat. Look upon thy brother Geoffrey's face. These eyes, these brows were molded out of his. Geoffrey was thy elder brother born, and this his son. England was Geoffrey's right, and this is Geoffrey's. In the name of God, how comes it then that thou art called a king? From whom hast thou this great commission, France, to draw my answer from thy articles? <laughs> from that supernal judge that stirs good <laughs> thoughts in an abreast of strong authority to look into and block the stains of right. Alack, thou dost usurp authority. Excuse, it is to beat usurping down. Who is it thou dost call usurper, France? Let me make answer, thy usurping son. Out, insolent, thy bastard shall be king that thou mayst be a queen and check the world. <laughs> My boy, a bastard by my soul, I think my bed was ever to thy son as true as thine was to thy husband. His father, by, my, by my faith, I think his father never was so true begot. Hey, oh, it cannot be, if thou wert his mother. <laughs> There's a good mother boy that blots thy father. There's a good grandam boy that would blot thee. Peace. Cure the friar. What the devil art thou? One that will play the devil, sir, with you. Well, he did become that lion's robe that did disrobe that lion of that robe. Women and fools, break off your conference. King John, this is the very sum of all. England and Ireland and to terrain Maine, 
In right of Arthur, I do claim of thee. Wilt thou resign them and lay down my arms? My life as soon. I do defy thee, Franks. Arthur, pretend yield thee to my hand. Come to thy grandam, child. <laughs> do, child, go to it, grandam, child. There's a good grandam. Can my mother peace? I would that I were low lady in my grave. I am not worth this coil that's made for me. Oh, a plague upon her. Thou unadvised scold. I can produce a will that bars the title of thy son. I, who doubts that? A will, a wicked will, a woman's will, a cankered grandam's will. Peace, lady. <laughs> Pause or be more temperate. Some heralds summon hither to the walls these men of Angiers. Let us hear them speak whose title they admit, Arthur's or John's. Who is it that has warned us to the walls? Tis France. <laughs> for England. England for itself. You men of Angiers and my loving subjects. You loving men of Angiers, Arthur subjects. We here have called you to this gentle part. In brief, we are the King of England's subjects. <laughs> For him and in his right to behold this town. We can all the the king is on the end. That can we not, but he then proves the king. To him will we prove loyal. Till that time have we rammed up our gates against the world. Doth not the crown of England prove the king? And if not that, I bring you witnesses, twice 15,000 hearts of England's breed. Bastards, to verify our title with their lives. And as many and as well-born bloods as those. Some bastards, Stand in his face to contradict his claim. Till you compound whose right is worthiest, we for the worthiest hold the right from both. Then God forgive the sin of all those souls that to their everlasting residence before the dew of evening fall shall fleet in dreadful trial of their kingdom's king. Amen, amen. Mount Chevaliers, to arms! Sierra, were I at home at your den, Sierra, with your lioness, I would set an ox head to your lion's hide and make a monster of you. Peace no more. Oh, tremble for you hear the lion roar! Hard to the pen where we'll set forth in best appointments all our regiments. Peace and take advantage of the field. Shall be so. And that another hill, command the rest to stand. God. And our right! Oh! much work for tears and many an English mother, whose sons I scattered on the bleeding grounds, and victory with little loss doth play upon the dancing banners of the French. Rejoice, you men of Antiers, ring your bells. King John, your king and England's doth approach. Command her this hot, malicious day. Open wide your gates and give the victor's way. Heralds, from off our towers we might behold from first to last. Onset and retire of both your armies, the equality of which by our best eyes cannot be censured. <laughs> One must prove greatest. While they wait so even, we hold our town for neither. Yet the boat. Friends! Hast thou yet more blood to cast away? England, thou hast not saved one drop of blood in this hot trial, more than we of France. Now speak, citizens, for England. Who's your king? The king of England! Ha! When we know the king! Ha! <laughs> you kings, your royal presences be ruled by me. Be friends a while, and both can jointly bend your sharpest deeds of malice on this town. <laughs> that done, dissever your united strengths, turn face to face, bloody point to point. I like you this while. Well. Council, mighty states, smacks and not something of the policy? I like it well. <laughs> friends, shall we knit our powers and lay this Angiers even to the ground? <laughs> then after fight, we shall be king of it. <laughs> Let it be so. Say, where will you assault? We from the west will send destruction into the city's bosom. I from the north. Our thunder from the south shall rain their drift of bullets on this town. Oh, prudent discipline! From north to south, Austria and France shoot in each other's mouth. I'll stir them to it. Come! Away! Away! Hear us, great kings! Vouchsafe a while to stay, and I shall show you peace and fair face, please. Speak on the favor we are bent to hear. That daughter there of Spain, the Lady Blanche, is niece to England. Look upon the years of Louis the Dauphin and that lovely maid such as she is in beauty, virtue, birth, is the young Dauphin in every way complete. That this union shall do more than battery can to our fast closed gates, for with swifter than powder can force, 
The mouth of Placid shall we fling wide open below entrance. But without this match, the sea enraged is not half so deaf. Lions more temperate, mountains and rocks more free of movement. No, not death himself in moral fury, half so peremptory as we to keep this city. Here's a large mouth indeed that spits forth death and mountains, rocks and seas. Talks as familiarly of roaring lions as mates of thirteen do of puppy dogs. <laughs> Soon I was never so bethumped of words since I first called my brother's father dad. Son, list to this conjunction, make this match. Give with our niece a dowry large enough, for by this knot thou shalt so surely tie my now unsure assurance to the crown. I see a yielding in the looks of France. Mark how they whisper. Why answer not the double majesties this friendly treaty of our threatened town? Speak England first. What say you? If not the dolphin there, thy princely son can in this book of beauty read, I love her dowry shall I equal with a queen. For Anjou, and fair Terrain, Maine, Poitiers, and all that we upon this side of the sea, except this city, now by us besieged, shall gild her bridal bed and make her rich in honors, titles, and promotions as she in beauty, education, blood. Well, what sayest thou, boy? Look in the lady's face. I do, my lord, and in her eye I find a, a wonder. Or a, a wondrous miracle. I do protest, I never loved myself. Till now and fixed, I beheld myself, drawn in the flattering table of her eye. Drawn in the flattering table of her eye, hanged in the frowning wrinkle of her brow. <laughs> My uncle's will in this respect is mine. If he see aught in you that makes him like, that anything he sees which moves his liking, I can with ease, I can will enforce it easily. That's my point. Or if you will, to speak more properly, I will enforce it easily to my love. Further, I will not flatter you, my lord, that all I see in you is worthy love. Then this, that nothing do I see in you that I can find should merit any hate. What say these young ones? What say you, my niece? That she is bound in honor still to do what you in wisdom still have safe to say. Speak then, Prince Dolphin. Can you love this lady? Nay. Ask me if I can refrain from love. <laughs> For I do love her most unfeignedly. Well, of course, if thou be pleased with all, command thy son and daughter to join hands. Good likes as well. Young princes, close your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Citizens and managers, open your gates. Let in that amity which you have made, for at St. Mary's Chapel presently, the rites of marriage shall be solemnized. Is not the lady Constance in this troop? Oh, I know she is not, for this match made up, her presence would have interrupted much. <laughs> Where is she and her son? Tell me, who knows? She is sad and passionate at your highness's tent. <laughs> and by my faith, this league we have made up will give her sadness very little cure. Brother of England, how may we content this widow lady? We will heal a ball, for we'll create young Arthur, Duke of Bretagne, and Earl of Richmond, and this rich, fair town we make him Lord of, call the Lady Constance, some speedy messenger, bid her repair to our solemnity. Go we, as well as haste will suffer us, to this unlooked for, unprepared Paul. <laughs> Gentlemen, tickling commodity, 
commodity, the bias of the world, this bod, this broker, this all-changing word. Clapped on the outward eye, a fickle France hath drawn him from his own determined aid, from a resolved and honorable war to a most base and vile concluded peace. And why rail I on this commodity? But for because he hath not wooed me yet, well, whiles I'm a beggar, I will rail and say there is no sin but to be rich. And being rich, my virtue then shall be to say there is no vice but beggary. Since kings break faith upon commodity, gain, be my lord, for I will worship thee. Gone to be married, gone to swear a peace, false blood to false blood joined, gone to be friends. Shall we have my to with promises? It is not so, thou hast misspoke, misheard. I trust, I may not trust thee, for thy word is but the vain breath of a common man. Let us speak again, not all thy former tale, but this one word, whether thy tale be true. As true as I believe you think them false, I give you cause to prove my saying true. Louis, you have Mary Blanche? Oh, boy, then where art thou? France, friend with England, what becomes of me? Fellow, be gone, I cannot brook thy sight. This news hath made thee a most ugly man. Do you beseech you, madam, be content. Pardon me, madam. I may not go without you to the king's. Thou mayest, thou shalt. I will not go with thee. To me and to the state of my great grief let kings assemble. For my grief so great that no supporter but the huge firm earth can hold it up. Here I, in sorrow, sit. Here is my throne. Bid kings come bow to it. By heaven, lady, you shall have no reason to curse the fair proceedings of this day. Have I not pawned to you, my majesty? You have beguiled me with a counterfeit resembling majesty, which, being touched and tried, proves valueless. You are forsworn, forsworn, arm, arm, you heavens against these perjured kings. A widow cries, Be husband to me, heavens, hear me, oh, hear me. Lady Constance, peace. War, no peace, peace is to me a war. Oh, Lamont, oh, Austria, thou cold-blooded slave, hast thou not spoke like thunder at my side, and dost thou now fall over to my foes? Thou wear a lion's hide, doff it off for shame, and hang a calf skin on those recreant limbs. No, oh, that a man should speak of those words to me. And hang a calf skin on those recreant limbs. Thou yeah. darest not say so, villain, for thy life. And hang a calf skin on those recreant limbs. We like not this. Thou dost forget thyself. Here comes the holy legate of the Pope. Hail, you anointed deputies of heaven. To thee, King John, my holy errand is. I, Pandolf, a fair Millen Cardinal, and from Pope Innocent the Legate here, do religiously demand why thou against the church. So willfully dost spurn, and force for force keep Stephen Langdon, chosen Archbishop of Canterbury from that holy see. This and our force on Holy Father's name I do demand of thee. What earthly name to interrogatories can task the free breath of a sacred king? Thou canst not. Cardinal, devise a name so slight, unworthy, and ridiculous to charge me to an answer as the Pope. <laughs> Brother of England, you blaspheme in this. Though you <laughs> and all the kings of Christendom are led so grossly by this meddling priest, yet I alone, alone do me oppose against the Pope and count his friends my foes. Then by the lawful power that I have, thou shalt stand cursed and excommunicate. Oh, lawful let it be that I have thrown the curse. Philip of France, on peril of a curse, let's go the hand of that arch heretic and raise the power of France upon his head, unless he do submit himself to Rome. Look, thou pale France, do not let go thy hand. King Philip, listen to the cardinal. We thank you, Father, for the difference is purchase of a heavy curse from Rome or light loss of England for a friend. For go the easier. That's the curse of Rome. Oh, Louis, stand fast. The devil tempts thee here in likeness of a new untrue bride. The Lady Constance speaks not from her faith, but from her need. The king is moved and answers not to this. I am perplexed and know not what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what canst thou say, but will perplex thee more if thou stand excommunicate and cursed? Good reverend father, make my person yours. And tell me how you would bestow yourself. This royal hand and mine are newly knit. And shall these hands, so lately purged of blood, so newly joined in love, so strong in both, unyoke this seizure and this kind of greet? My reverend father, let it not be so. All form is formless, order orderless. Save what is opposite to England's love, therefore to arms. 
be champion of our church or let our church, our mother, breathe her curse, a mother's curse on her revolting son. Father, to arms! Upon thy wedding day, against the blood that thou hast married, what, shall our feast be kept with slaughtered men? Shall braying trumpets, loud churlish drums, clamors of hell pay measures to our pomp? Oh, husband, hear me. I, alack, how new is husband in my mouth, and even for that name that till this time my tongue did ne'er pronounce, upon my knee I beg, go not to arms against mine uncle. Oh, upon my knee, made hard with kneeling, I do pray to thee, thou virtuous thou fail, alter not the doom for thought by heaven. Now shall I see thy love, what motive may be stronger with thee than the name of a wife? That which upholdeth him that thee upholds, his honor, O oh, Louis, thy honor. I will denounce a curse upon his head. Thou shalt not need. England, now fall from thee. Oh, fair return of banished back. Oh, foul revolt of French inconstancy. France, thou shalt rue this hour within this hour. That the suns are cast with blood. Fair day adieu. Which is the side that I must go with all? I am with both, each army hath a hand. And in their rage, I having hold of both, they swirl asunder and dismember me. Husband, I cannot pray that thou mayest win. Uncle, I needs must pray that thou mayest lose. Father, I may not wish the fortune thine. Brandon, I will not wish the fortune thrive. Whoever wins on that side shall I lose. Assured loss before the match be played. Lady, with me, with me thy fortune lies. There where my life fortune lives, there my life dies. For <laughs> Go with thee. For England, cousin, go. Hubert shall be at your van. 
attend on you with all true duty. On to Helen, ha! Courage and comfort all shall yet go well. What can go well when we have run so ill? Are we not beaten? Is Andrews not lost? Arthur Tain prisoner, divers dear friends slain, bloody England into England gone? Oh, look who comes here. A grave unto a soul. I prithee, lady, come away with me. Lo, now, now see the issue of your peace. Patience, good lady, comfort, gentle constance. No! I defy all counsel, all redress, but that which ends all counsel, true redress. Death, death, oh amiable, lovely death, oh come to me! You utter madness and not sorrow. Thou art not holy to belie me so, I am not mad. This hair, I tear, is mine. My name is Constance, I was Geoffrey's wife. Young Arthur is my son, and he is lost. I am not mad, I would to heaven I were. And Father Cardinal, I have heard you say that we shall see and know our friends in heaven. If that be so, I shall see my boy again. But now will canker sorrow eat my bud, and chase the native beauty from his cheek, and he will look as hollow as a ghost. When I shall see him in the court of heaven, I shall not know him. Therefore never, never must I behold my pretty Arthur more. You hold to pay us respect of grief. He talks to me that never had a son. You are as fond of grief as of your child. Grief fills the room up of my absent child, lies in his bed, walks up and down with me, puts on his pretty looks, repeats his words, stuffs out his vacant garments with his form, remembers me of all his gracious parts. Then have I reason to be fond of grief. Fare you well. Had you such a loss as I, I could give better comfort than you do. Oh, Lord, my Arthur, my boy, my fair son, my life, my joy, my food, my all the world, my widow's comfort, and my sorrow's cure. I fear some outrage and I'll follow her. Tis strange to think how much King John hath lost and which he accounts so clearly won. Are you not grieved that Arthur is his prisoner? As heartily as he is glad he hath him. Your mind is all as youthful as your blood. Now hear me speak in a prophetic spirit, for even the breath of what I mean to speak shall blow each dust, each straw, each little rub out of the path that shall directly lead thy foot to England's throne and therefore mark. That John may stand, that Arthur needs must fall, so be it, for it cannot be but so. But what shall I gain by young Arthur's fall? You and the right of Lady Blanche, your wife, may then make all the claim Arthur did and lose it, life and all, as Arthur did. How green and fresh you are in this old world. This act so evilly born shall cool the hearts of John's people and freeze up their zeal. Maybe he will not touch young Arthur's life, but hold himself safe in his imprisonment. Oh, sir, when he hear of your approach, even if the young Arthur be not gone already, even at that news, he dies. And then his people will revolt from him. Therefore, to England go. I will let on the king. Strong reasons make strong actions. Let us go. If you say I, the king will not say no. We be this iron hot. And look thus in the heiress. When I strike my foot upon the bosom of the ground, rush forth and bind the boy which you shall find here with me, fast to the chair. Be heedful, hence and watch. I hope your warrant will bear out the deed. Unkindly scruples, fear not you. Look to it. Young lad, come forth, I have to stay with you. Good morrow, Hubert. Good morrow, dear friends. <laughs> Why, sad. Indeed, I have been merrier. Oh, mercy on me. Methinks nobody but I should be sad. Is it my fault that I was Geoffrey's son? No, oh, it is not. <laughs> and I would to heaven that I were your son. So you would love me, Hubert. <laughs> If I talk to him with his innocent prates, he will awake my mercy, which lies dead. Therefore, I will be sudden and dispatch. Are you sick, Hubert? You look pale today. In sooth, I would you were a little sick. Then I may sit all night and watch with you. I warned I love you more than you do me. His words do become. 
take possession of my bosom. Read here, young Arthur. Can you not read it? Is it not fair writ? Too fairly read. For so foul fact, must you with hot irons burn out both mine eyes? Young boy, I must. And will you? And I will. Have you the heart to put out these eyes? These eyes that never did or never shall so much as frown on you? I have sworn to do it, and with a hot iron must I burn them out! Ah, uh, none but in this iron age would do it. And if an angel had come to me and told me he were to put out my eyes, I would not have believed him. Come forth! Do as I bid you do! Who will save me? You will save me! My eyes even now are out the fierce looks of these bloody men. Give me the iron, I say, and find you here. Alas, you need me so worse as rough. I will not struggle. I will stand them still. For heaven's sake, Huber, let me not be bound. They hear me drive these men away, and I will sit as wide as a lamb. Go to! Send within. Let me alone with him. I am best pleased to be from such a need. Come, boy. Prepare yourself. Is there no remedy? None but to lose your eyes. Don't you hold your tongue! Let me not hold my tongue! You remember, let me not. Or, if you will, put on my tongue, so I may keep my eyes. I will spare my eyes. Though to no use, but you still look on you. Well, see the lift! I will not touch thine eyes, for all the treasure that thine uncle loves. Oh, now you look like Hubert. Hold this pile to her disguise. Peace, no more ado. Your uncle must not know but you are dead. I'll fill his dogged spies with false reports. And pretty child, sleep doubtless and secure that Hubert, for the wealth of all the world, will not offend thee. Oh, heaven, I thank you, Hubert. Silence, no more. Go closely in with me. Much danger do I undergo for thee. Here once again we sit, once again crowned and looked upon, I hope, with cheerful eyes. Salisbury, Pembroke, Meantime, would ask what you would have reformed that is not well, and well shall you perceive how willingly I will both hear and grant you your requests. Then I heartily request the enfranchisement of Ardbear, whose restraints doth move the murmuring lips to discontent, to break into this dangerous argument. Let it be so. I do commit his youth to your direction. Hubert, what news with you? This is the man who should do the bloody deed. He showed his worth to a friend of mine. I do fearfully believe tis done, which we so feared he had the charge to do. We cannot hold mortality's strong hand. He tells us Arthur is deceased tonight. Indeed, we feared his sickness was past cure. Indeed, we heard how near his death he was, before the child himself felt he was sick. Why bend you such solemn brows on me? Think you I bear the shears of destiny? Have I commandments on the poles of life? It is apparent foul play, and to shame that greatness should so grossly offer it. So thrive it in your game, and so farewell. Stay it, Lord Salisbury. I'll go with you and find the inheritance of this poor child. This little kingdom of a forced grave. This must not be thus born. This will surely break out to all our sorrows, ere long I doubt. They burn in indignation. I repent. There is no sure foundation set in blood, blood, no life achieved by others' death. A fearful eye, thou hast. How goes all in France? From France to England, never such a power for any foreign preparation was levied in the body of a land. The copy of your speed is learned by them. Even as you should be told, they do prepare. Oh, where hath our intelligence been drunk? Where hath it slept? Where is my mother's care that such an army could be drawn in France and she not hear of it? My liege, the first of April died your noble mother, and as I hear, my lord, the lady Constance in a frenzy died three days before. What? Mother dead? How wildly then walks my estate in France? Under whose conduct came those powers of France that about the truth be without or landed here? Uh, under the dolphin. Thou hast made me giddy with these ill tidings. 
Oh, gentle kinsman, here's thou the news abroad, who are arrived? The French, my lord, men's mouths are full of it. Besides, I met Lord Pembroke and Lord Salisbury with eyes as red as noon kindled fire, and others more going to seek the grave of Arthur, who they say is killed tonight on your suggestion. Gentle kinsman, go. I have a way to win their loves again. Bring them before me. I will seek them out. My mother dead. My lord! They say five moons were seen tonight. Four fixed in the fifth did whirl about the other four in wondrous motion. Five moons! Old men and beldams in the street do prophesy dangerously upon it. Young Arthur's death is common in their mouths. <laughs> Why seekst thou to possess me with these fears? Why urgest thou so oft young Arthur's death? Thy hand hath murdered him. I had a mighty cause to wish him dead, but thou hast none to kill him. Here is your hand and seal for what I did. Oh, how oft the sight of needs to do ill deeds makes deeds ill done. Hadst not thou been by, a fellow by the hand of nature marked, quoted and signed to do a deed of shame, this murder had not come into my mind. My lord! Oh, no! My lords leave me, and my state is braved, even at my gates with ranks of foreign powers. Arm you against your other enemies. I'll make a peace between your soul and you. Young Arthur is alive. This hand of mine is yet an innocent and a maiden hand, not yet painted with the crimson spots of blood. Doth Arthur live? Oh, haste me to the peers, throw this abhor on their incentive rage, and make them tame to their obedience. I conjure thee, but slowly run more fast. The wall is high, and yet the light is down. The ground is beautiful, and not. There's fear or not, who do know me? And if they did, the ship was some past the skies be quiet. I'm afraid. And yet, oh, Benchlet, if I get down and do not break my limbs, I'll find a thousand ships to get away. It's good to die and go. As to die instead. Oh, me, my uncle's spirit lies in these stones. Heaven, take my soul. England, keep my bones. Sir, we will meet to not take Edmund's grave. It is our safety, and we must make this gentle offer of a perilous sign. Who brought that letter from the cardinal? The Count Mellon, a noble lord of France. Tomorrow morning, let us meet him then. Once more today, we will met, distempered lords. The king by me requests your presence to meet. The king hath dispossessed himself of us. We will not lie in this thin, mistained cloak with our cure of honors, nor attend to the foot that leaves the print of blood where it walks. Return and tell him so. We know the worst. This is the prison. What is he lies here? Oh, death, made proud with pure and princely beauty. The earth had not a hole to hide this deed. Murder. As hating one himself hath done, doth leave it open to urge on revenge. It is a damned and a bloody work, the graceless action of a heavy hand, if that be the work of any man. It is the shameful work of Hubert's hand, the practice and the purpose of the king. Lords, I am hot in seeking you. Arthur, the blood! The king has sent for you. Oh, he is old and blushes not at death. Avant, thou hateful villain, get thee gone. I am no villain. Must I rob the law? Your sword is bright, sir. Put it up again. Not till I sheathe it in murder skin. Stand back, Lord Salisbury. Stand back, I say. I would not have you, Lord. Forget yourself. Out, Dunghill. Darest thou brave and nobleman? Cut him to pieces. Keep the peace, I say. What wilt thou do? Renowned with Falconbridge, second of villain, and a murderer. Lord Pembroke, I am not. Who killed this prince? Tis not an hour since I left him well. Away with me, all you whose souls abhor the uncleanly savor of a slaughterhouse, for I'm stifled with the smell of sin. Away, toward Bury, to the Dauphin, there! Here's a good world. Knew you of this fair work? I do suspect thee very grievously. If I act, 
consent or sin of thought, be guilty of the stealing of that sweet breath. Let hell what pains enough to torture me. I left him well. Go, bear him in thine arms. I am amazed, methinks, and lose my way among the thorns and dangers of the world. How easy dost thou take all England up? Bear with that child and follow me with speed, I to the king. A thousand businesses are brief in hand, and heaven itself doth, doth frown upon the land. Thus have I yielded up into your hand the circle of my glory. Take again from this my hand, as holding up the Pope, your sovereign greatness and authority. Now keep your holy word. Go meet the French, and, you, and from his holiness use all your power to stop their marks before we are inflamed. It was my breath that blew this tempest up upon your stubborn usage of the Pope. But since you are a gentle comfort tight, my tongue shall hush again the storm of war and make fair weather in your blustering land. Go I to make the French lay down their arms. All Kent hath yielded, nothing there holds up but Dover Castle. London hath received like a kind host, the Dauphin and his powers. Your nobles will not hear you, but are gone to offer service to your enemy. <laughs> Would not my lords return to me again after they heard young Arthur was alive? They found him dead and cast into the streets. That villain Hubert told me he did live. So on my soul he did, for aught he knew. But wherefore do you droop? Why look you sad? Be great in act as you have been in thought. Let not the world see fear and sad distrust. Govern the motion of a kingly eye. The legates of the Pope have been with me, and I have made a happy peace with him, and he hath promised to dismiss the powers led by the Dolphin. Oh, and glorious league! Shall we, upon the footing of our land, send fair play orders and make Compromise, insinuation, parley, and base truce to arms, invasive, let us, my liege, to arms. Perchance the cardinal cannot make your peace, or if he do, let it at least be said, they saw we had a purpose of defense. Have thou the ordering of this present time. Away then, with good courage. Yet I know our party may well meet a prouder foe. Come, Salisbury, for thou shalt thrust thy hand as deep into a purse of rich prosperity as Louis himself. So noble shall you all, that yet your sinews to the strength of mine. Look where the holy legate comes apace to give us warrant from the hand of heaven. Hail, noble prince of France. The next is this. King John hath reconciled himself to Rome. His spirit is come in that so stood against the church. Therefore thy threatening colors now wind up, and tame the savage spirit of wild war. Your grace shall pardon me. I will not back. Your breath first kindled the dead coal of wars between this chastised kingdom and myself, and brought in matter that should feed this fire. And now it is far too huge to be blown out by that same weak wind which enkindled it. You taught me how to know the face of right, acquainted me with interest to this land, yea, thrust this enterprise into my heart. And come ye now to tell me John hath made his peace with Rome? Am I, uh, what is that peace to me? I, by the honor of my marriage bed, after young Arthur, do claim this land for mine. And now it is half conquered. Must I back because that John hath made his peace with Rome? My Rome slave? What penny hath Rome borne? What men provided? What munitions sent to underprop this action? It's not I that undergo this charge. Who else but I? And such as to my claim are liable, sweat in this business and maintain this war. You look but on the outside of this work. Outside or inside, I will not return. My holy lord of Milan, from the king I come to know you have dealt for him. The Dauphin is too willful opposite. He flatly says he'll not lay down his arm. <laughs> By all the blood that ever fury breathed, the youth says well. Now hear our English king, for thus his royalty doth speak in me. Know the gallant monarch is in arms. And you degenerate, you ingrate rebels, you bloody heroes ripping up the womb of your dear mother England, blush for shame! There am I brave, and turn thy face in peace. We grant thou canst out scold us. Fare thee well. We hold our time too precious to be spent with such a brat. Give me leave to speak. No, I will speak. We will attend to neither. Strike up our drums to find this danger act. And thou shalt find it, Dauphin. Do not doubt.
How fares your majesty? This fever that hath troubled me so long lies heavy on me. Oh, my heart is sick. <laughs> my lord, your valiant kinsman Falconbridge desires your majesty to leave the field and send him word by me which way you go. <laughs> We have good comfort, for the great supply that are expected by the dolphin here are wrecked three nights ago on Goodwin Sands. This news was brought to Richard, but even now, the French fight coldly and retire themselves. I <laughs> mean, this tyrant fever burns me up and will not let you welcome these good news. Let's head on towards Winston, to my litter straight. Weakness possesses me. Oh! I did not think the king so stored with friends. Up once again, put spirit in the French. If they miscarry, we miscarry too. That misbegotten devil Falconbridge, in spite of spider alone, holds the day. <laughs> I beshrew thy very heart. I did not think to be so sad tonight as this hath made me. Who was he that said King John did fly an hour or two before the stumbling knight did part our weary powers? Whoever spoke it, it is true, my lord. Well, keep good quarter and good care tonight. The day shall not be up so soon as I to try the fair adventure of tomorrow. Ugh. <laughs> Thou hast a perfect thought. I will put all hazards well believe thou art my friend that knows my tongue so well. Come, come, sans compliment. What news abroad? The king, I fear, is poisoned by a monk. I left him almost speechless and broke out to greet you with this evil, that you may the better arm yourself to the sudden time than if you had at leisure known of this. How did he take it? Who did taste to him? A monk, I tell you, a resolved villain whose bowels suddenly burst out. The king yet speaks, and peradventure may recover. Who didst thou leave to tend his majesty? Why know you not? The lords are all come back and brought Prince Henry in their company. At whose request the king hath pardoned them. And they are all about his majesty. Away before, conduct me to the king. I doubt he will be dead or ere I come. It is too late. The life of all his blood is touched corruptibly, and his pure brain doth by the idle comments it makes foretell the ending of mortality. His highness yet doth speak, and holds belief that being brought into the open air, it would allay the fell burning quality of that fell poison which is say with him. Let him be brought into the orchard here. Doth he still rage? He is more patient than when you left him. Even now he sung. But tis strange that death should sing. I am the signet to this pale, faint swan. No chance it told him to his own death. Be of good comfort, Prince. So hot a summer in my bosom that all my bowels crumble up to dust. I am a scribbled form drawn with a pen upon a parchment, and against this fire do I shrink up. How fares your majesty? Poisoned! <laughs> Comfort. And you are so straight and so ingrateful. You deny me that. Oh, that there were some virtue in my tears that might relieve you. Oh, I am scalded with my violent motion and spleen of speed to see your majesty. Oh, cousin, thou art come to set my eye 
My heart hath one poor string to stay it by, which holds but till thy news be uttered. The dolphin is preparing hitherward, where heaven he knows how we shall answer him. For in a night the best part of my power, as I upon advantage did remove, were in the washes, all unwarily devoured by the unexpected flood. I read these dead news in as dead in here. My liege, my lord, and now a king, now thus. But even so must I run on, and even so stop. What surety of the world, what hope, what stay? When this was now a king, and now is clay. Art thou gone so? I do but stay behind to do the office for thee of revenge, and then my soul shall wait on thee to heaven, as it on earth hath been thy servant still. Straight let us seek, or straight we shall be sought. The dolphin rages at our very heels. It seems you know not then so much as we. The Cardinal Pandolf is within at rest, who half an hour since came from the dolphin, and brings with him such offers of our peace that we with honor and respect may take with purpose presently to leave this war. Let it be so. And you, my noble prince, shall wait upon your father's funeral. At Worcester must he be interred, for he so willed it. Thither shall it then. And happily may our sweet self put on the lineal state and glory of the land, to whom with all submission on my knee I do bequeath my faithful services and true subjection everlasting. And the life tender of our love we make, to rest without a spot forevermore. I have a kind soul that would give thee thanks, and who knows not how to do it but with tears. Oh, let us pay the time but needful woe, since it hath been beforehand with our griefs. This England never did nor never shall lie at the proud foot of a conqueror, but when it first did help to wound itself. Now these are princes are come home again. Come, the three corners of the world in arms, and we shall shock them. Not shall make us rue, if England to itself do rest but true.